in the last video I talked about the Ruby laser. This I think is the very first laser that um, has been invented. And the the way um, that the electron energy that the electrons in 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 this ruby crystal hop from one level to to another. I've described the the three levels in which uh, the electrons uh, go to. It's fairly typical of a number of other lasers that were other types of lasers that were invented after after the ruby laser and because there are there are these three levels there the ground state excited state and the metal stable states this scheme if you like this scheme of uh, creating a population inversion and stimulated emission is called a three level system a three level system So in the case of um, in the case of Ruby, in the case of Ruby, the frequency of the stimulated emission is in the red color region of the visible spectrum. Now specifically, um, this transition from the metastable to ground states has an energy change of 1.79 eV and this corresponds to using uh, remember using the formula for the photon energy E equals to HF it corresponds to a wavelength of 694.3 nanometers and that's that's red color right. so that these three levels ground state to excited states and then from excited state to the metastable states um, some might actually go direct to the ground state again quite quickly but some would go to the metastable states and if you remember we need that we need uh, enough uh, atoms with electrons in the metal stable state uh, so that there is a population inversion so that there are more electrons in this excited state than that there are electrons in the ground state and and then when you know photons from uh, that was spontaneously emitted from other atoms you know if you wait long enough a photon that the electron will still fall to the ground state and photons would be emitted so if photons from other atoms hit this one, it will stimulate this electron to fall to the ground states more quickly and that uh, that gives out a photon as a result and that's what we call a stimulated emission. Right, so that having lots of electrons there give the population uh, inversion population in Version and uh, when photon from another atom hits this and and uh, cause the electron there to come down to the ground states more quickly, thereby emitting the photon itself. This is called stimulated emission. And because three levels are involved, that's a three level system. Now, um, you might guess that there, these are, this is not the only possible way um, that, that things can happen in a laser. In fact, after the Ruby laser was invented, uh, people have worked very hard to look for other so called lasing material, meaning material with which you could create population inversion and therefore stimulate emission of photons and 
um, people have looked at different materials, different kinds of atoms, uh, and atoms with many electrons typically have very complicated uh, energy level systems. And there are actually many, many other ways to do this. So what I'll do is I'll look at um, a, a related example that have a slightly different set of energy levels. Oh, before I leave this, it uh, I should mention, um, right, I should mention before leaving this topic what the ruby laser is used for. Uh, when it was first invented, uh, some, uh, not too sure how long, maybe some decades ago, uh, being the first laser, people use it for uh, try to apply it to different things. But uh, today, it has been superseded by uh, lots of other new uh, lasers. Uh, and today, today the Ruby laser has only maybe one or two uses. And one one of the main so kind of niche area is to make um, large holograms. Right, you may know what a hologram is. It's basically a 3D image or 3D photo. Right? It's a piece of maybe it might be a piece of glass or plastic and when you look look at it, the picture or the photo in, in this piece of uh, hologram looks 3D. If you move your head around, you can see different parts of the image. So it looks three-dimensional, unlike a normal photo. So Ruby laser is apparently good for making uh, very large uh, holograms. And um, the other thing that Ruby laser is used for, right, I got all this from Wikipedia on Ruby laser, is for hair removal. So apparently it's, it's good for this. Right, so let me leave Ruby laser and look at uh, another laser called, uh, let me write this down, New Demium, it's a New Demium, New Demium Doped, let me write down the full name first. It um, yttrium aluminium garnet. Now that's a very long name and it's got lots of um, quite a number of different chemical elements combined together in, in a complex crystal. I'm, I'm not too sure what a garnet is. I think you can look it up on a web search. It might be some si silicon oxide uh, material, possibly. I'm not, I'm not going to guess. So anyway, uh, the, the short form for this very long name is N V Y. So N D. Y A G N D E X laser. N D E X laser today it's quite an important laser. Um, it has it has many uses. Um, let me just write this down just so we can at least just so we know that it is useful. It is used for eye surgery is used um, oh, right. it's used to treat skin cancer is used for welding welding joining pieces of metals together it's used for 3d printing 3D printing, meaning it can actually, from using, uh, say, metal powders, a, lump, uh, a pile of metal powders, you can actually shine this laser on it, you know, with proper focusing and control to melt various parts of the, that pile of 
uh, metal powder so that when it is done you, you get a three-dimensional shaped object maybe a, a statue or, or some complex uh, metallic structures so that's 3d printing it's uh, a bit like magic okay now the um, this ND YAG laser how does it actually work now um, I'm not going to go into uh, as much detail as with the Ruby laser. Let me just say that um, right this ND YAG material um, is it's probably uh, cut or, or made into a shape not very different from the Ruby crystal that we saw and they would probably have again a mirror and Two parallel mirrors um, on the two sides for lights to bounce back and forth and stimulate emissions, and that would probably be some kind of a flash tube, uh, sort of a fluorescent tube that can flash a very bright flash of lights to excite the electrons from the ground state and create a population inversion. So very much the same idea as with the ruby crystal so but what the, the main thing that i i like to talk about uh, for this laser is the energy levels right so the energy levels okay um, Let me just start with the ground states. So ground states. So that's where the electrons would be if you just leave the atom to itself. Um, right, but okay, there are. Uh, this is not hydrogen, so each atom would would have many many electrons. So I'm just thinking about maybe one of the electrons in one of the level. That, that can get excited when it's stimulated by this flash. Okay, so there's an electron there at one of the ele energy levels in, in an atom in this handy yang crystal. So when when there's a flash from the from the from, from this light tube, the electron there will get excited to a higher level. Right. Okay, so that's the excited state. That's the excited state. And once again, there should be a, a, a finite, well, there should be a chance that the electron can just fall straight down again um, to the ground state. So that would just be spontaneous. It would, just be spontaneous and, and give a spontaneous emission of photon and, and that can't be used as a laser but it so happens that uh, like with the ruby laser there are metastable states at slightly lower energy that an electron in the excited state can also fall into so these are metastable states where the electron might remain for um, slightly longer time than than if it falls direct to the ground states, just as in the case with the, with the ruby laser. And this is the metastable state that can contain that population inversion. Okay, so by having this bright flash of light, many electrons in many of the atoms can go to the go to the excited state and. Uh, a lot of them would go to a metastable state and stay there for a little while. And when it's hit by uh, photons from spontaneously emitted from other or, or stimulated from other atoms, the electrons in the metastable states would then fall, just as with the case of the Ruby laser. Now, the difference is that in this ND YAG laser, the electron does not fall straight back down to the ground state. It falls to 
a slightly higher state of a slightly higher state and then it goes to the ground state so when it falls to this state now in the case of the nd yet laser see the stim the stimulated emission um, gives a photon with a wavelength of 1.006 micrometer so hopefully uh, if you have watched one of my my earlier videos when i talked about wavelengths of the visible spectrum you would know that 1.06 micrometer is a longer wavelength than red light in other words this is infrared right it's um let's see the longest for red light is about 750 nanometer so this is longer than that so we can't see with our eyes we can't see this light with our eyes it's infrared radiation and that's what the ND Yang laser um, produces. Okay. And after that, after it has fallen to this lower state, it would then uh, decay quickly or, or fall quickly to the ground state. And this is sometimes described as a fast decay, meaning it just means that it falls to the ground state. And um, right, from the ground state to the excited state, when it gets you know, stimulated by the bright flash, from the excited state to the metastable state, it can happen, uh, it would happen usually by uh, losing some energy, losing some energy to um, vibration or heat. In other words, that there would usually be no emission of photons here. Okay, but the the difference um, from the ruby laser is that here there are four levels involved. But if you if you think about it, the main idea is not so different. It, you need a metastable state for population inversion, and then from there, uh, when it's stimulated by other photons, uh, for, uh, it would emit its own photons by falling to a lower level and eventually it gets back to the ground states so we could we, we, we would call this a four level system now so the three level system and the four level system uh, seems to or, or something similar seems to um, be the case for a number of lasers that people have invented since the ruby laser but today um, i think there are probably lasers that are even more complicated or, or that are that could be different from from these three or four level schemes one example is for example uh, for example the the laser pointer that we are most familiar with the laser pointer that you use to point at, at the wall uh, hopefully not at people and that laser the laser pointer as well as the laser in, in your DVD player, if you have one, those are made of semiconductors, and and uh, uh, and one important difference, uh, right? It will it will still have like what what are like mirrors on the two sides and and photons bouncing back and forth to assume the emissions. So that idea remains. That idea is the same for for most lasers, I think, but in a semiconductor laser instead of using a, a bright flash to stimulate um, to to excite the electrons right? instead of using a light tube with a bright flash the semiconductor laser in the dvd player and in our laser pointer uses an electric current to stimulate uh, to produce the excited state okay, so but i shan't go into uh, the details of that I just want to give the, uh, some idea that lasers today are can get quite complicated.